In today's video, we're going to take a stab at recreating a Harry Potter teleportation effect. Here's what that looks like. Show off. Before we jump into the tutorial, I just want to give a quick shout out to Motion VFX. They're not sponsoring this video, but they did just release their M Title Cinematic 2 pack for DaVinci Resolve, and it's kind of awesome. That opening title from the sketch is actually part of it. So if you're looking for some really good, clean motion titles for your videos, check out the link in the description. Also, gotta mention that Film Riot created a very similar effect in After Effects back in 2011, and I definitely used that as a template for what I did in DaVinci Resolve, although I did add a few things to spice it up a bit. I'll link that Film Riot video below if you wanna check it out. Thanks for being an inspiration, guys. To create this effect, you'll need two pieces of footage, one of your actor coming out of the teleportation and a clean plate. And I know I've said this before, but when you're filming, it makes it a lot easier if both your shot of the actor and your clean plate are filmed at the same time so you don't risk bumping the camera and screwing everything. Uh, once you have your footage in DaVinci Resolve, create a new timeline and place a seven frame long clip of your clean plate on video track one, then place a seven frame long clip of your actor on video track two. The first frame of the actor clip should be the frame where your actor is coming out of the teleportation. Now, once we start doing the work in Fusion, we're gonna be doing a lot of warping and spinning animations. And the easiest way to do that is to work with a still image. So head to the color page and export a still of your first frame of your actor clip by right clicking on the preview monitor and selecting grab still. Then in your gallery, right click on your still, click export and save it as a TIFF file. Next, bring your still into a photo editor of your choice and remove the background. I personally use Photoshop for this. I'm not going to go over how to do that here because I already did that in a tutorial a couple of weeks ago. I'll have that link below if you want to check it out. Once you have your background free still, bring it back into Resolve. Then in your timeline, replace your actor clip with your still. From there, create a fusion clip by selecting your still and your clean plate, right clicking and choosing new fusion clip. Then head to the fusion page. As always, our first step in fusion is to get organized. Select your media in one node, press F2 on your keyboard and rename your node as plate. Then do the same thing with media in two and rename it actor. Then delete your merge node. Now let's create our little spinning ball of chaos. This is kind of the cornerstone of our composition and it does take some time, but overall it's pretty easy. First, select your actor node, hit shift space on your keyboard and search for the warper tool. Select it and click add. Then select your warper node and in the the inspector, turn your scale controls up to three. This will allow you to see your warping points more easily. What is going on with my voice? <coughs> Next, place the warper tool in the left viewer by either clicking the left dot under the node or by selecting the node and pressing one on your keyboard. From there, click around the edge of your actor to create warping points and adjust your warping points until your actor looks like a weird distorted semicircle. Now it's time to make it spin. Select your warper node, then in the toolbar, select transform. Rename that transform node as transform spin because organization is awesome. Then make sure your playhead is at the beginning of the composition's timeline. With your transform node selected in the inspector, set a keyframe for your angle to mark the beginning of your spin. Then move your playhead to frame six and change your angle to 720. This will automatically add another keyframe. And now if you play it back, you'll see that you're still now makes two very fast rotations, but it still looks like crap. So let's fix that. In order to get that chaotic swirling mass that we'll end up with at the end, we need a few more of these spinning warped stills. But before we get into that, select your transform node, then add another transform node to the chain and rename that transform aspect. Don't do anything with this yet. And because we've already created one spinning element, creating more is just a matter of copying and pasting our still, warper, transform spin, and transform aspect nodes. And to make this even easier, we can create a group of these four nodes by selecting them, right-clicking, and selecting group. 
then rename that group spin. Next, select your spin group, hit Control C on your keyboard, then with your spin group selected, hit Control V three times to create three more spin groups. And since you had your original group selected when you did this, they should already be connected by merge nodes. It's like magic. The only problem is since all of our spinning elements are in the exact same spot, moving in the exact same direction, it looks like nothing was actually done. To fix this, first select the final merge node in the chain and place it into your left viewer so you can see what you're doing. Then double click on your first spin group to open it. Next, select your transform aspect node and play around with the aspect, angle, size, and position. There aren't really any suggested settings for this. All we're trying to do is make our four spin elements look like they're going in different directions. Hence why I'm calling this a swirling ball of chaos. Once you've gotten your first spinning element taken care of, open the remaining spin groups and tweak those transform aspect nodes until you have something that you're happy with. You might also need to go back into your transform spin nodes to adjust the pivot points of all of your spinning stills. It's still gonna look horrible because of the lack of motion blur, but we'll be adding that later. So for now, we're done with our swirling ball of chaos. To celebrate, close all of your spin groups, then select all of your spin groups and their corresponding merge nodes, right click, select group, and name that group something that you'll remember, like chaos ball. Yay organization. We might need to tweak the position of our chaos ball later. So just to be safe, select your chaos ball group. God, that's fun to say. Chaos ball, chaos ball, so fun. Then add a transform node after that group and rename it something like chaos position, which sounds like an action movie that I would totally watch. Next, we're going to make an exit animation so it's less of a hard cut between the effect and the next clip. To do this, select your chaos position node, then in the toolbar, select a merge node to add it to the chain. Then open up your media pool and drag in another instance of your still with the background removed and connect that to the foreground input of your merge. Label the new still node as exit still. With your exit still node selected, hit shift space on your keyboard and search for the vortex tool. Then select vortex and click add. Move your playhead to the beginning of your composition. Then with your vortex node selected in the inspector, set a keyframe for your size. Then move your playhead to frame four and set another keyframe. Next, move your playhead to frame six and change your size to 0.2. Next, we wanna make it so the vortex effect doesn't appear until the last couple of frames of the composition. To do this, select your vortex node, then in the inspector, select transform. Move your playhead back to the beginning of the composition, select your new transform node, then in the inspector, bring your size down to zero and set a keyframe. Then move your playhead to frame two and set another keyframe. Frame. Next, bring your playhead to frame four and bring your size back up to one. Finally, select your exit still, vortex and transform nodes, right click, select group and rename the group exit. Now that we have our spin and exit animations, it's time to make it all look like it's one thing. To do this, select your chaos position node and tweak the size and position until you like how it looks. There aren't really any specific settings here. It really depends on the footage you're working with. But once you're done with that, it's time to create some motion blur. Select the merge node that connects your chaos position node and your exit group, then hit shift space on your keyboard. Search for motion blur, select the motion blur tool, and click add. Select your motion blur node, then in the inspector, set your motion estimation type to better, motion range to large, motion blur to 100, and blur direction to both directions. At this point, the main part of the effect is complete, but we still have some work to do to connect connect it to and blend it with the rest of the scene. But before we do that, let me know in the comments if there's an effect you'd like to see me try on this channel. And on your way down there, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really does help. Let's get back to Resolve. At some point, we're going to need to tweak the position of this effect, so select your motion blur node and grab a transform node from the toolbar. We're not going to do anything with this node yet, but it's probably a good idea to rename it so we remember what it is later. So select the transform node, press F2 on your keyboard, and rename it effect position. 
Now drag a line from the effect position node to your plate node output to create a merge node and add your effect to the scene. And now it's time to start adding those little tweaks to make this look a little bit more realistic. To start off, select your plate node, hit shift space on your keyboard and search for displace. Select displace and click add. Then connect the effect position output with the displace node foreground. Select your displace node, then in the inspector, bring your refraction strength up to 1.33, your light power up to 1.33, 0.75 and your spread up to about 0.4. The effect will be subtle, but it'll be enough to have the teleportation effect the environment. Next, let's add a shadow. Select the merge node that connects your displace node and effect position node, and then click the merge node icon in the toolbar. Next, select your chaos ball group and copy it. Paste it in an empty area of your node section, then connect the group with the input of your new merge node. With the copy of your chaos ball group selected, add a transform node, blur node, and color corrector node. Select your transform node, then tweak your position, pivot, and aspect until it looks like the spinning mass of stills is lying flat on the ground. Then select your blur node and bring your blur size up to about 8.5. Next, select your color corrector node in the inspector, select settings and check the pre-divide post multiply box, then back in correction, bring down your gain and gamma until you have a solid black mass. Now select your merge node and bring the blend down to about 6.5. Then bring your playhead back to the beginning, bring your size down to zero and set a keyframe. Next, bring your playhead to frame six and bring your size back up to one. The final step in Fusion is to tweak the effect size and position so it ends in the same spot where your actor will end up landing. Select your effect position node and tweak and keyframe your size, aspect, position, and whatever else you need to do in order to get the look that you want. Once you're happy with your results, head back to the edit page. We now have our teleportation effect, but in order to actually pull it off, we need to surround it with the rest of our footage. So in your timeline, place a clip of your clean plate before your fusion clip and the clip of your actor landing out of the teleportation after the clip. And when you're all said and done, you should have something like this. The great thing about this effect is that it allows you to play around with a lot of different nodes and settings in order to really make it unique. That being said, it can be pretty confusing if you're new to Fusion. So if that sounds like you, check out this video right here. And until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.